Welcome back to 755 Forever. I'm David O'Brien, Braves writer at The Athletic. I'm with my co-host, Eric O'Flaherty, former Braves reliever. What's happening, Eric? Nothing. How about you? Not much, man. Just finished mowing the lawn. It's beautiful here. I think it's nicer here in Atlanta than it is actually in Florida, where it's already getting humid and in the 80s. It's beautiful in Atlanta. I'm going back down there on Saturday, hopefully avoiding rain. Nice. We got a uh, – you guys are in for a treat tonight. We got a really special guest. Uh, you know him. I'm sure you know him if you're old enough to remember Braves baseball not that long ago. You love him, B-Mac, Brian McCann, former All-Star, Silver Slugger, catcher with the Braves, and the Astros and Yankees. What's happening, B-Mac? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. How you guys doing? My, two of my favorite people. Let's oh, no, go. Says. Let's go. <laughs> We've been trying to get you on long enough. I'm glad to have you here. Glad to get you off the golf course for, for an hour. I know. I, it's all I've been doing. I'm, 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 a, I'm obsessed with golf now since I retired. Obsessed and coaching little kids uh, baseball, right? Hey, I'm coaching an 11U baseball team, and I'm I'm loving every second of it. Is that preparation for you to become a major league manager someday? <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I did the WBC with with Dero, uh, it's the coaching yeah. man. It, I'll tell you what, underpaid. <laughs> yeah, coaches yeah. and managers. I'm yeah. telling you, it's it's a 365 all in day in day out. So I uh, I got such appreciation for the coaches that I've had. And, that are that are doing it now. I mean, it's it's a full time. You're in the cut. You know, I, and Eric and I have talked about this too. I try to, to explain to people when they all expect like Chipper and people like that to immediately become managers or like it's just a, a given they're going to become managers. I go, you guys don't understand. It's not like in the old days. These guys made, in the case of a Hall of Famer, hundreds of millions of dollars. They have to go to managing, and managing isn't just as hard as it was as a player. It's twice the workload, the hours yeah, it is. with much, much less money. And it's yeah. basically year round responsibilities. No, it, I, for me, it, it wouldn't be the money. It would be leaving the kids and right, my wife yeah. and getting back into that schedule again, where grind. You know, when you're gone for so long and you grind for so long and then it's over, you know, you, you got to take, I mean, it takes a minute to, to get you, get you back to square one again. And, uh, you know, so that part of it is is the reason that it's hard to jump back into the game because, you know, my kids are 11 and 10 and I yep. miss so much early. And if I get back yep. into something now, it's it's like you're you're missing everything. Yeah, it seems like uh, some of the guys that have little kids, the ones that get back into it, it just takes a few years. So they spend time with their kids. The kids get a little older and then they go and then, you know, and the, the bug gets them and they get back in. Like, like Dero seems to be easing back into it. And if yeah. somebody made him a hell of an offer, I bet he wouldn't be able to turn it down at this point. I'm telling you, it's, it's uh, exactly what you said. You kind of read, read where your kids are when, when they're in high school and going into college. And then, you know, when you're an empty nester and you're getting to that point, I think, I think, the, the the juices start start uh, going again. Well, we got a lot to talk about with you, um, but first of all, I wanted to ask you. I know you you're keeping close tabs, and I know you watch a lot of the Braves games, go to some of the games, watch them all, most of them, and you're in touch with a lot of people in the organization. When you look at uh, the moves the Dodgers made in the off season, do you see the Braves and the Dodgers as kind of a given health if, as long as they're healthy and play to what they're capable of as being clearly better than the rest of the field do you think it is in another team that's close to them at all yeah I, I think I think you put the Phillies in that category as well I think yeah. they're they're star studded their top of rotation is as good as anybody's and their lineup and they'll have to maybe tweak tweak the bullpen here and there but as I think those three are in a class where whoever gets hot at the right time yep yeah, you, you know, you see what happens. Yeah. People get so used to this Braves team winning 100 games, which they've done the last two years, 101 and 104. They might have a better team this year and not win 100 games because the Phillies are going to be 15 to 20 games better probably than they were the last couple. The last two years, they finished 14 games behind the Braves. They yeah. beat them in the division series. But like you sure. said, that Phillies rotation, if they're healthy in that lineup, they might push 100 wins themselves. Yeah, it's going to be a battle for the division. I mean, I think that both teams are, are stacked and some, you know, the Phillies and the they all had their strengths and weaknesses, but 
they're they're going to be there at the end. They're both going to get 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 a, get a chance at the postseason, and I think whoever's hitting on all cylinders at that time is going to be the team that that plays uh, for for the for the CS. We've 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 talked about this ad nauseum, but I wanted to get your opinion on it. Uh, the last couple of years, the Dodgers and the Braves were the best teams in baseball. They go into the division series, and with the expanded field, it's something you never experienced as a player. Something that hardly nobody had until the last couple of years. This five day layoff, and it looks like teams are really trying to get a handle on how best to handle it. And so far, Braves have tried a couple of different ways, but. And granted, they had pitching injuries, that which were a big part of it, illness and pitching injuries. But what are you glad that you're not that you don't ha- you didn't have to have a five day break before you play? It, Just stop everything and play five days later. It's it's such a disadvantage to to sit there at home for five six days. You know, just for the All Star break, it would be three to yep. four days, and yeah. every time you came back from that, it took Starting you at over. least a game to get your feet under you. At least yeah. a, a day, and then, but I think it's different when you play a buck sixty-two, and you're beat up, and yeah. the human body when you shut down, just your mind's going to shut down after a buck sixty-two. And I know you got the playoffs and you got to ramp back up, but yeah. you kind of sit back and and all right, I just went through the grind. Let me take I'm going to take two days off instead of one, or I'm, let me take a little bit of BP on day three. But th- there's no way to prepare. I don't care what you do in between. It, the, yeah, the adrenaline you're going to have facing an inner squad is not the same no. as as the bright lights and and coming in hot. I always would pray that I didn't pitch that first game back from the break. Did, didn't you feel off. lethargic? I was just like, I don't want to be out there today. Let me get today. Let me get hot in the pan yep. so that I throw, and then tomorrow yep. I'll be good. But if I had to come from the break and just jump right in the game, it was going to be ugly, and I was just going to have to hope they hit it right at people. Yep. I, I felt the same way. It always yep. took me at least a game. Yep. I t- I totally agree with you on uh, being a disadvantage, and I and people take it when the Braves lose. If the Braves, you got to watch what you say because if you say yeah. you know it's a disadvantage, you sound like you're, you're like whining. Yeah, but it just is, and 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 yeah. they're going to have to fix it. I know that it's hard to do it right away, but they're going to have to fix it because yeah, it's a disadvantage. It's not like yeah. basketball or the NFL where they're used to taking days off, sometimes multiple days in the in the NFL's case, six days off before you play again. In baseball, you play every day. And like you said, you yeah. can't just uh, flip the switch and get that intensity that the team that had to play that wild card round had to play when they're playing for their lives. Yeah. I, I also I was, think you got to penalize the teams that make it through the wild card where when that series is over, you got to get on a plane no matter. It, I don't care yeah. if it's at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, you're playing the next night Yeah, yeah. To, try to, to try to get that thing down. Did you feel like, because um, you played in the playoffs a lot, did you feel like, you ever got used to that or like it took a game or two to feel like to, to channel that energy because I, I pissed in that wild game, wild card game in 2012. And it was like, I'd never held a baseball before in my life. I was so, yeah. I was, I mean, I was prepared for it, but I had so much adrenaline. It was just hard to control. Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all really hard to control. You almost got to like go the opposite route when you're all amped up. You got to, I, I felt like the bet, the best players always had the ability to like, to go the opposite route when everybody else is speeding up they're they're in slow motion. And I think that that's why the great players are the great players. And if you had three games already under your belt and that first round of the next series, I mean, how yeah. much easier is that to kind of re- rein it in a little bit? You see it all the time with the wild card team, making a, making, making a run deep into the playoffs because yeah, of that. I feel like It ain't yeah. coincidence, man. It's getting hot. I mean, the team that gets hot, as long as you're healthy, healthy enough. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the Marlins won two World Series. They've never won a division title. Yeah. You know, you need you need two one one or two position players to get hot. Yeah. And you got to have the top of the rotation. Wheeler pitched, oh, you know, as the best pitcher that we've we've witnessed. Yeah. I mean, he was as he was good incredible. as they come for that for in a long time. He looked like Kerry Wood when Kerry Wood yeah. was like the top, the yeah. most dominant guy in baseball. That's that's what he looked like. And they yep. had the advantage last year too. The the Phillies after playing that wild card series that the the NL last year had the extra day built into the division series round, whereas the year before it was the AL. So last year the Phillies had an extra day so they could use those their main three pitchers the entire series again in the division series. Yeah, I'd also like to see them reseed. 
where that, oh yeah absolutely where whoever whoever's the top seed is going to play the lowest seed and absolutely regardless there, there's yeah. got to there's got to be a benefit to finishing first and and you, there's got to be something stacked your in your favor yeah uh, opening day just two weeks away. Get your 755 Forever swag. Visit 755forever.com. That's the number, 755forever.com. And click on sh the store. T-shirts, mugs, hats, slides, you know it. We got it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are about 230 subscriptions from reaching the magic number of 1,000. It's, uh, it's at 755forever on YouTube. So we appreciate everybody's been watching us here. Um, I wanted to get back to here. Oh, it was... I wanted to ask you, was winning a World Series, what, 2017 with the Astros, was that the highlight of your career, or were there other experiences that came close in a different way? Was winning the World Series the the highlight of your career? Definitely a highlight for sure. And, I, you know, you never forget when you're called up. I think that's – right as, yeah. a, as a young kid, like you're – that's that's a huge deal. So getting that call from, from uh, Brian Snicker telling me I'm getting called up and then mm – -hmm. uh, you know, just share. I, I, my biggest experiences are are the plane flights with with O'Flaherty yeah. and D. Ross and the hotel yeah. rooms and the dinners and those are the things I yeah. think when when you're done playing that you think about the most. It's not it's not the it's not anything but that is hanging out in the clubhouse laughing and those are the things that cross your mind pretty much daily. And then it's, it's gone. You go from you get that all the time, every day yeah. of your life, you know, most of the season, seven, eight months a year of doing that to your home and yep. your friends are spread out. It's that's a big change. I think almost every player agrees on that, that that's what they miss the most. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the same as BMAC. It's it's not, you know, whatever highlights or good seasons I had that I miss or am the most proud of. It's all the all the fun and all the relationships you built. It's when me and O'Flaherty, when me O'Flaherty and D. Ross were locked in on the plane, you could have flown to Japan, <laughs> and, we, and we, you could, you, it could have been yep. a twenty-hour flight, yeah. and we, we didn't care if that plane. plane even landed. <laughs> hey, you know, it seems like nine out of ten players say the same thing. They don't name one specific game, or they say the camaraderie. I just missed the overall camaraderie going to the clubhouse, and that's the thing that keeps Charlie Morton in it. I mean, he's got yeah. four kid, four kids at home, and he loves being at home with his kids. But he is so pulled into this team because of the great chemistry. I think if he would have ended up somewhere else, I don't think he'd still be pitching. But he's loved the chemistry in this clubhouse. And he says he just misses that so much. And when he gets back, it's like coming home at the first once ring training starts, even when you got a bunch of different faces. That's yeah. another thing, too. The, the, Alex has done an incredible job putting this team together. And the, for me, you got the best manager in baseball running the team. And they, they are – when I left in 19, I remember talking to all those – I mean, all of all the players. I mean, you guys are set up for the next decade plus. Yeah. And then Michael Harris comes along, and he's a heck of a player. And so they're they're just – there's no weaknesses. They're fun to watch every night. I mean, this it's is like the – this is prime time to be a Braves fan. This yeah. and then back in, in the 90s. Yeah, it, it's almost like the same the same yeah. feeling around here. I mean, I get it all the time. P people are locked in. Yeah, this is kind of that second golden era, I think, of the Atlanta Braves, and they're making money hand over fist. They're winning, and they got these guys locked up. I think I think Alex Adopolis is the best GM for a couple of reasons. One, having the 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 vision, the foresight to get to take some risk and lock up all these young guys. They got to want to do it but they want to do it because of the clubhouse that he's built no and how doubt. much fun, how much they enjoy them being on this team. So they're all willing to sign on knowing they're probably going to sacrifice some at the back end because they want to be part of this. So he's done a great job. Unlike anybody I've ever seen vetting the team, bringing guys in that fit in the clubhouse perfectly. Yeah. The first time me and O'Flaherty saw uh, Freddie Freeman hit in the cage, we mm -hmm. looked at each other. He was 19. We looked at each other and we're like, yeah, th this is, this is going to be a star. Yeah. It's gonna be like so so when you identify that, you lock them you lock them up early to make it it's hard to turn down that first contract. So yep. when you get when you get those years under your belt and you and you steal two or three or four years of free agency, man, it's it's a it's a can't miss for me. I think that's the way every team should 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 do it. Identify your talent and then keep them around. Yeah, and they have so many good baseball people, you know, on staff too. 
I remember oh T.P., T- P- Terry Pendleton, and Eddie Perez will put their name on somebody. You know, there, there'd be a prospect up in camp, and it'd be all this hype, and they'd be like, no, 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 you got to see Acuna, or you yep. got to see Simmons play shortstop. But yep. you had these guys that have seen 40 years of baseball, and they would say, that guy is a dude, and he's going to be good. And they've had coaches and really experienced guys like that in the organization for a long time that are just great dudes. Yeah, that's why you hate to see scouts – that 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 yep. side of it kind of get dwindled a little bit because you yep. get lifers, baseball lifers that give their give their everything to to that to that craft, and it means something. We would always get those those reports, and guys would be out there grinding and city yeah. to city to city, and you know it's such a big help. So I hope I hope that that part of the game gets back to. Uh, you never like to see old school guys kind of getting dwindled out because. There's, there, there's a new and easier way to do things. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize outside baseball how many, how much the scouts, the human scouts, the old guys you're talking about, have been pushed out of the game because teams rely so much now on all the data they can get through via video and now with TrackMan and all that being in every ballpark, you can get hard data on every player and every play, and yeah. it's eliminated a lot of scouting jobs, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of them. And I'll tell you this, like – a lot of people talk about analytics and I, I love them because I feel like you, you, there's no weak, you know, you can exploit a weakness. Everybody yeah. has one and there's no like, Hey, let's read his swing. And you know, you can read the, the, as a catcher, you would read the swing in game, but you right. would know if the guy's hitting a dollar, dollar 10 on sliders and he, yeah. you can go to it when that time's right. And if a guy, you know, if a guy takes 90%, Two one three one one zero curveballs. That's the part when of catching that my 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 last you know four or five years that I really love because you're going into a game saying this is the the, the answers to the test are right here for you. You just got to yeah. study it. Yeah. And so that 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 that's what I miss too. I miss I miss going over hitters and. Did you see stuff like when spin was a big deal? You know, like be, before spin became like a thing. You could still read that as a catcher, right? You could be like, well, this guy's throwing 91, but his fastball's got ride to it. Yeah, you knew the guys. Yes. But I think now hitters in today's game are now looking at spin rate and saying, all right, if this spin rate's this, I, I got to swing yeah. a ball above a the ball. So it's almost yeah. like guys are playing Definitely chess. Hitters. Yeah, guys, hit, guys are playing chess. It's not like, hey, I'm just going to go up there and hit. It's like, hey, uh, let me – because now you got all of it. You got you – got, videos or you got uh pitching machines that will mimic O'Flaherty's yeah. pitching so I can go yeah. get a B's <laughs> I remember the pitchers used to <laughs> they're like you're like you can do what I'm like yeah <laughs> these are going all over the place yeah Mac, colleges have them Mac how much would you enjoy it now with one like you said having all the analytics and you were a catcher that really studied all that and the Braves catchers do that they have since they had flowers and now with Darno and, and especially Murphy, they 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 love studying that stuff. But if you'd have had that, all that data to study your whole career, and also if they would have had abolished the shift, oh my god, early in your career, man, nah, can you that, imagine what your numbers might have looked like? I mean, it, it it killed me. I mean, as soon I went from two eighty to two to two forty real quick. Yeah, <laughs> when team started shifting on you. Yeah, but I, see, I didn't have the opposite field power, so I, I'll never forget in a hotel room with chipper and he goes what type of hitter do you want to be do you want to be 300 with 15 or do you want to be 270 with 25 and i'm like i'll take 270 with 25 <laughs> like, well, then, so that i went that route and then all of a sudden those you know the, that hit in the four hole was always there yeah. so even if you barreled one but then when that went away if i could go back in my career i would have I would have hit everything to left center in BP and never pulled a baseball until the game. And I think uh, chipper's advice, huh? That's what I would have done. I, I, I would have gone for my homers, but in BP and everything, I would I would have never tried to go deep. Like Freddie. Exactly, yeah. exactly like him. Like Freddie you know, trying to hit line Freddie. drive. Freddie trying to hit a line treat. drive over the shortstop. And, and he he mastered it. Yeah. And now he can yeah. do that whenever he wants. And his body, the way his body moves and works. Man, he's turned himself. I mean, we all knew it, but man, has he been? He's Hall of Fame. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, he's on that, he's on like, that path he's, for sure. He, nah, he's going to, he's the next, he's, he's, in my opinion, I think he's the best hitter in baseball, pure hitter, yeah. game on the line, life on the line. If I had to pick one person, Freddie Freeman's getting that at bat. Yeah. He's a machine, man. Yeah, he is. Year after he plays year every after day. Year. He's got yeah. the right mindset. Man, I, I was going back to play with him was, was a highlight of my career too, getting to play with him my, my last yeah, year. how far he came. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, all of it. For those who might not be entirely familiar with BMAC's career, I did some notes here. It's going to make you blush. You probably don't want me to read these, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> um, maybe for you guys who are, are too young to remember how elite of a hitting catcher he was. I mean, not good. He was a great hitter for a catcher. Great, great hitter. McCann was a seven-time All-Star, six-time Silver Slugger in 15 seasons with the Braves, Yankees, and Astros. Retired with a 262 average, 789 OPS, 110 OPS+. Plus. 282 home runs, 1,018 RBIs. Also had 294 doubles and five triples, and pretty impressive for a guy that was uh, not very fleet afoot, <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> Man. But those stats run. don't even reflect short leg. how great he was with the Braves for that first big, long stint you had with him, starting your career with the Braves. He spent his first nine seasons with the Braves. In that span, McCann hit 277 with a 350 OBP, 823 OPS, 117 OPS plus, average 25 doubles, 20 homers, 73 ribbies in 123 games annually. All-star in seven of those nine seasons with Atlanta, including seven of the eight full seasons, and it's not counting the first one when you only played like 60 games. When an all-star every season except your rookie year when you played 59 games in your first eight seasons. Here's the, here's the one that really jumps off. During a six-year span, through 2011, this year, six full seasons in the, in the majors. McCann was an all-star every year and won five Silver Slugger awards as the best hitting catcher in the National League. In that six-season span, hit 287, 850 OPS, 123 OPS plus, averaged 32 doubles, 22 homers, 86 ribbies in 137 games and 544 plate appearances. Remember, there was only a DH in interleague games on the road at the, in AL ballparks at that point. So you didn't even play any position except catcher until 2014 when you played a little bit of first base with the Yankees. So you were catching all those games. Here's a number of games Brian started at catcher in that six-year span with the Braves. 118, 130, 132, 124, 120, 19, and 118. And you also caught part of 32 other games in that span. And here's one that I'd never even done until I looked at it today. You caught more than a thousand innings every season in that six year span, and more than eleven 1, hundred innings in three of those six seasons. For some comparison, Sean Murphy caught eight hundred and sixty six innings last season with the Braves, started ninety eight games at catcher. Murphy had a career high thousand and four innings in twenty twenty two with Oakland, when he started one hundred and sixteen game catchers and at games at catcher and thirty at DH. Travis Darno had a career high 909 innings caught in 2014 with the Mets, started 103 games. That was his first full major league season. His next highest total, 876 innings in 2022 when he was the first time All-Star with the Braves, caught 99 games. So that just gives some people an idea what an Iron Man you were relatively a catcher compared to what guys are catching nowadays. And that was in the heat of Atlanta, obviously. So, I mean, it was pretty damn impressive, dude. Well, I appreciate it, man. You, you have to go through all, all that, but I pre I appreciate it, man. I I miss it. I definitely miss competing and but it's funny. I get I, I help out some high school kids and I'll get down there in my squat and then next thing you know, I got fluid in my knee. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's over, man. It's over. But no, I loved every second of it, man. Coming up through the Brave system, I felt so lucky to have the coach. Snit was my double-A manager, Rocket Wheeler, Randy Engel. I mean, I, I just – I felt like the Braves were always a step ahead of player development. We, we we were ready when we came. And then on the big league side, you had those veteran guys who took us under their wing to show us the, – yeah. I mean, they knew we were the second – the new wave. So, like, we were just – they were just passing the torch on to us. And, um, you know, I get to spend a lot of time with Smolty, and I tell him all the time. I mean, he, he was uh, – he was great to us. What about the the two catcher system that they they and most teams use nowadays, where you have two, like the Braves have a guy have guys 
Sean Murphy made the All Star team last year. Darno made the All Star team the year before. Yeah, I mean, how, how, do you think you might have played a few more years if you'd have had some of that wear and tear eliminated I, as I, you got older? You know what? I, when I look back, if I would have caught on one knee, right? I think I think I would have played a couple more years. I think that was. I think yeah. You know, everyone talks about like the block, which which I think game on line. You know, yeah. you, if, if you can't get to a baseball, that's tough. But man, I tell you, with the longevity, I think that would have uh, added a couple years on to for me playing. You have one of my favorite uh, quotes because we talk about it a lot. On you know, our guys playing too many games. Uh, um, it's always a topic because these guys like to play every day. But you have this quote. Um, I remember you saying like, "Today might be the day I go deep." It, the, yeah. so you wanted to be out there every single day because today might be a day you put up some numbers, and if you wind up no. sitting. By the end of the year, maybe you you finish with five, six less home runs, and and I think you're only in your prime, yeah, so long. And I think when you're in your prime and you feel great, get out there. I would I would have not liked coming to the ballpark not catching four out of five games. I would have I would have not liked that. So I I'm glad I came up in the era I came up in and and played like I did and and you know and I had the best backup catcher to ever to yeah. ever put them on. D Ross is. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, me, Rossi, and O'Flaherty, and Prado. <laughs> Pro, Prado would always come late night. He'd always yeah. come later. He'd br but, bring the boombox too. Yeah, we we just had we just had such a, a great time together, and you know we're all still still so close. How about here's another? I was talking about career highlights. Where does this one rank? Homer and off Roger Clemens. Yeah, that's the one. In I your thought of. first playoff game of your career, Game Two of the 25 NLDS, seven one Braves win. Braves only win in that series. Smoltzy went seven innings for the Braves that day, gave up seven hits, one run, one walk, five strikeouts, and did that in 93 pitches. Where does that game and that home run off Rocket Roger that, rank? That that changed my life. I, I, <laughs> I that that home run changed. They ended up tra trading Johnny Estrada that that offseason, and they gave yeah. me the everyday catching job going into the 06 season. But that that home run, I'll never forget when I was in the box. I had a 2-0 count, and I'm like, if you don't miss this, your life changes tonight. And that's how I thought. I really, I mean, I, that, that was that's going through awesome. my head. I was telling myself that in the box, when I got the 2-0 count, I, uh, the 1-0 pitch was a split that I laid off. And, you know, when you're 21, they're like, all right. Like, he could, he could have walked me to get to Smoltzy with two outs. Yeah. But not knowing me, and he's like, all right, like, we're going to, we'll let Smoltzy lead off the next inning. And I just remember sitting there, I'm like, he's going to challenge me. And this is the <laughs> night, this is the night my life could change. But that's wow. how important a mindset is too. Cause you weren't there trying to mess up. You're trying to have a moment. That's cool. Oh, was, that's that's what we live for. <laughs> wanted, that's what we live for. <laughs> that's cool. Well, what was that like catching Smoltz in a playoff game? Guy you'd long admired and who you also caught in your second major league game when he threw a five hit complete game against Oakland. On June 11th, 2005, and he did that in, in 106 pitches, by the way. But what yeah. was that like for you catching Smoltz in those supposed two to, pivotal games? I was only supposed to be up in the big leagues for four days. I was supposed to come up and then get get sent right back out when, when everybody was healthy. And I caught Smoltzy, and after the game, he went into Bobby's office and said, I want him catching me every fifth day. I think he, he, I think he liked, you know, me being young and – uh -huh. You know, new new mm. to this and, and excited mm. and, and bright eyed and all of it. And he stuck his nose, he stuck his neck neck out there for me. And he allowed me to get the 180 at bats I got that year. And he, he got he allowed me to sit the bench and watch watch the players and what this life is. And so yeah, that was huge. And then I'll never forget walking in from the bullpen with Smoltzy against the the when the Astros when Clemens was pitching. And he said to me, Hey, we're gonna start Biggio off with three straight sliders, and he's gonna swing at all three of them. We're gonna punch him out, and we're gonna set the tone for the series or whatever. He said something like that. I'm looking yeah. at him like, you know, I got my high school buddies that are in the bullpen, like <laughs> drinking beer, <laughs> looking at me. Like, I, I would catch a ball from Smolty, throw it back, and all my high school buddies are up there, like drinking. <laughs> And I'm like staring at him, like, dude, I don't even know what this is. Like, <laughs> so for him to tell me that and then go out and do it, man, I I remember catching that third strike, and I just looked at him, and I'm like, that's when I knew there were like levels to the game. It wasn't just, yeah. hey, we're all gonna put a uniform on and go play baseball. Like, <laughs> guys yeah. aren't doing that.
<laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> hey, Eric. Hey, oh, how many times did, in a big spot did you get out of? You got you made a huge pitch, and I just stare at you like I want to. I want to. Oh, punch that's you my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just like I learned early in my career not to get too high or low, and I never really celebrated. But he would be this. This is what made Max special. And if you look at my career, throwing to like him and Rossi, you know, like he was talking about, we'd go up to we go up to Max Suite after the games and we'd, we'd have a couple beers and he'd order everything on the rooms and we'd just hang out in the room and we would, we would win a game nine to one and B Mac and Rossi are, are debating some pitch they called for the long man in a blowout game, you know, and they're, and they're talking about it for 15 minutes and they're going back and forth and whoever called it's upset. Like, man, I messed that up. I would sit in that room and it was such a change for me to be around these guys that cared so much about their teammates. So every time I pissed, I knew it was almost like he cared more than me. Yeah. And so I'd get out of a situation, I'd make a big pitch, and he would just stand up and puff his chest out and stare <laughs> at me like he wanted to spear me, you know, like a little brother, like he was proud of me. And so every time I pissed, I just wanted to see that look on his face. I wanted yeah. to get out of it, and I wanted to see yeah. him stare at me. Oh, man. You had that uh, that game – I looked at the box score today, and Chris Reitzma and Kyle Farnsworth each pitched the scoreless inning to finish off that playoff game. I have what I'd ask you because uh, Oh and I have talked about this. Farnsworth, was he the teammate you'd least want to fight or just a player you'd least want to fight, period? Yeah, I'm, I don't want to lock horns with him at all. I always made sure he was good. Was like, yeah. Hey, you good? <laughs> You good? Okay. I'm, okay. Hey, if you're okay. good, I'm good. <laughs> he was, he was scary, was dude, man. Dude. He was great, though. I mean, good he teammate. He was great. Um, did you remember we we were celebrating one time, and uh, Rossi always mouth off to everybody and tell jokes and razz everybody. And he was we were handing out champagne when we were waiting to celebrate in 2010 because if the Giants won or lost, if the Padres lost, we clinched the wild card. I think it was. Right. Right. And Rossi threw him a muscle milk, and he gave Rossi this look, like. <laughs> Hey, you know, he got serious real quick. And I, first time Farnsworth, I ever seen Farnsworth Rossi threw it to him. Yeah. No, Rossi threw Farnsworth. Oh, oh, okay. I got like you. Like as a joke. And then the clubhouse right, right. laughed and Farnsworth gave him a look like not right now. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. we're not doing that right now. <laughs> the first time I've seen Rossi scared. <laughs> All right. Speaking of fights, let's talk about one of the most unforgettable nights. The best. I've, I've ever seen in a baseball game. It's one of my favorite moments covering the Braves or doing this period in 30 years, you standing in the middle of the third base path, 15, 20 feet up the line, blocking Carlos Gomez's path to the plate after the Brewers slugger talked shit with, I think every member of the Braves infield as he was going around the infield, but especially with Paul Mahalam at length, September 23rd, 2013, in your second stint with the Braves, one of the final games of your career, and the Braves, I always said, they missed a golden opportunity to make the best bobblehead that would have of ever been last year <laughs> yeah. on the 10th year anniversary of that. Yeah. You with the face mask up, yelling at Carlos Gomez, jaw to jaw. That would have been an incredible bobblehead. I got it right here on my wall. Can you see it back there? The picture? <laughs> yep, the picture's on my wall. It's my favorite my BMAC f- moment of all time. <laughs> oh, my God. That picture is one of my favorite ever. Nobody knows that side of him, but you cross him, he might get uh, serious. I mean, it's, you were it, you were 15, 20 feet up the line, dude. What hey, was going through your head as he's running the bases? Well, I didn't know the whole story. Like, right. I I didn't know Paul Mahomes hit him, but yeah. they thought they thought <laughs> I put my middle finger down to for Mahomes to hit him. Right. And when we were in Milwaukee, but I give my my curveball sign. There was a shadow that was cutting off half my 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 index finger. Uh huh. So so they thought I called it. But I he took the first swing and he said something to me. I can't remember exactly what he said. And then he hit the next one out. And I'm like, I was mad that he went deep. And then I'm looking at him. And man, all I kept thinking about in my head was if I don't do something here, Terry Pendleton is gonna yeah. take an R161 <laughs> and he's gonna hit me across the face. <laughs> I better do something here. And it was just one of those things I was. I think my daughter was just born. Like I just, that was like my first game back from my daughter being born. And I was like, no sleep. I was, I was ready to go. <laughs> Not in the mood. <laughs> nah, I wasn't in the mood, but man, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a funny story. We were in, 
we were in the World Baseball Classic. So we're at the hotel. I got my wife and two kids. We we're eating dinner and we're leaving. And Carlos is eating dinner uh, with his family. And my son, <laughs> he was 10 at the time, or maybe a lad on a 10 or 11. And my son has seen the video. So my son sees him before I see him. And my he goes white. My son, my son went white and he had this look on his face. He's like, oh my God, are they gonna fight? But, <laughs> but you talk about a good dude. And yeah. man, I like I've always respect, like he 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 plays hard and like I, I got nothing but respect for him. But man, he I I ran into him there and he's like, I get asked about that more than anything else in my career. And so do I. So do I. <laughs> I uh yeah, that was uh oh TP, you you mentioned TP. In case people don't know, TP's the guy who once walked off the field as third baseman yeah. when his pitcher would not yeah. hit a guy in retaliation. They told yeah. him and he wouldn't do it. I won't say who it was, but TP walked off the field. TP don't play around, man, when it comes to that old school stuff. Nah, he he that's how he he trained us, man. He was like, You you're you you do not let anybody come in here and and show you up. So it's just kind of how we were all raised. And yep. you know, you see the games changed. Yeah. And, and and it's great. And everybody's always always gets on me and they're always like, "Oh, you're no fun, you're no fun." Right. I'm like, "Yeah, but that, that's how I was raised." Right. But like now, my my son hit a home run last year and came into home plate and did the gritty. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's doing the gritty and he did he he shot a uh he did like a turnaround jumper. I'm like, uh, "Come on. Uh, I'm yeah. all in on the skits." Yeah, that's fine. That's funny cuz we got a question from a YouTube guy. What is BMAC's thoughts on bat flips and players who show passion flair? He used to get mad at people for having fun. Has has he come around at all? So you just answered that I'm, question. Eric I'm and I have talked about this. We're the same way, man. We it's not a game yeah. anymore. It's, it's Listen, not our game I'm, anymore. We're out of I'm it. I'm good with it until you show disrespect. Like if right. if it's if you want to hit a homer and you do, but if you stare me down and right. you're yep. looking for a fight, I'm I'm in. <laughs> if if that's if that's what we're doing, yeah, I'm in. So it's like if as long as it's not like you know, you tell me to you you have some choice words for me after you hit a homer, like I'm in. Where are we going? But like <laughs> if if you hit a homer and 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 you're you do your thing, go do your thing. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it a bunch, and that's where I'm at. I'm just like, hey, yeah. I'm not going to get fired up on my couch. Yeah, it's their game, and they can police it themselves. You know, it's just. But if somebody but, takes you deep and looks at you and, and, and says, hey, you know, yeah, come here and he grab, you know, whatever the case may be, that's a different that's personal. That's a different type of energy that yeah. they I say, fuck I, you, I you're going to go. I don't yeah. have that walk away mentality. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we, we've, we talked about, we've talked about how much respect we've got for Snit for being as old school as they come, a guy in his 60s. And. He has adapted so much to the game, yeah. knowing that there's no reason not to. Because if you don't adapt, you're going to be out of the game. Yeah. That's it. So he's That's got it. he's got one of the most flamboyant players in baseball, but also arguably the best player in baseball, Ronald Acuna. Yeah. And he lets him do his thing, and he's not no. disrespecting the other the opponent. He's just no doing doubt. his thing. That's the game. But to see Snit adapt to that is pretty incredible. Because this is an old school guy who spent decades in the minor leagues teaching guys. Yeah to play the game an entirely different way when it comes to that stuff. And another thing that kind of gets overlooked is when me and O'Flaherty came up, there was three rookies and yeah. 22 veterans. So there was grown yeah. men. I was walking into right. a clubhouse with Smolzy oh. Chipper, Brian Jordan, um, these heavyweights, and there would be two or three rookies. When I left, it was three yeah. to four veterans – and yeah. the rest are rookies. So it's like you don't want these guys, you know, going to their dinners saying, man, man McCann's a, you know, yeah. a jerk. Yeah. Or, or, or like what you said, if you don't adapt, you're out. Yeah. Yep. If Ronald Acuna went to, went to the Braves and said, hey, I don't like this guy. Yeah. He, 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 this guy. Right. Like, guess, guess who's leaving? Yeah. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he ain't yep. leaving. So. Nope. You know, it's having awareness, and the game has changed. But, but man, I'll, it, I don't think the game's ever been this good. I mean, the yeah. athletes that we're watching every night, college baseball's better. It used to be – I think I would equivalent college baseball back when we were coming up to, like, low A, maybe rookie ball low right. A. Now, you watch college baseball now, I guarantee you it's equivalent to double A. The, the, the yeah. Wyatt Langford kid, the Dylan Cruz, these guys are – they're big league ready right yeah, now. Yeah. Like if Wyatt yeah. Langford breaks camp, 
Yeah. He he might hit 30 home runs. Yeah. yeah. They and have information, hurt. they have training programs, they have so many resources we didn't have. Yep. Yeah. A lot of these schools have pitching labs, that kind of thing now yep. that were that are better than the facilities, the equipment that the that uh, major league teams had 10 years ago. We had that 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 Power five room schools. we had at a in Disney Disney World. <laughs> I got a better one in my house. And this <laughs> yeah. was this was 30 guys, 40 guys, 60 guys in camp. With the to get exercise bike there. out in the hallway. Hey, yeah, I was working out in that hallway half the time. We couldn't What's go up, into Roman? the training room. Remember, right. we couldn't go in the training room unless you had arbitration. Yeah. So like we're, the or your of arm even, got sawed off. Like if your arm right. fell off, you'd go in there and get some ice or something. And but. then what's going to happen? You're going to get buried for weeks. <laughs> so, so you got to wear you got to wear it, but you got to get the treatment. But man, it was yep. just different times. And I love the era I played in, and I love watching the era now. And so yeah, I, I think it's I think the game's in great hands. The the Braves went from facilities wise, their upgrade in spring training was kind of like the Mets going from. City Field are going from Shea Stadium to City Field. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's like the Braves place now. Their weight room looks like an SEC football weight room. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's it it's impressive, man. Yeah, um, and I think I think Truist Park's the best the best yeah. park in baseball. It's, it's so nice, it's nice. So they've nailed it. Hey, you know what I forgot is that game we were talking just at last point on that Carlos Gomez game. I forgot that that uh, for one, Gerald Laird got ejected from that game, but so did. So did Freddie and Gomez. Freddie Freeman was shoving the, I guess, yeah. shoving a bunch of group people. Might have thrown a punch. I'm not sure. I think he's just yeah. shoving people. But uh, Gerald Laird got ejected, and you didn't get ejected. I, didn't, I couldn't believe it. Because I, Gomez was such an asshole that I think the umpire <laughs> said he deserved it. <laughs> no, I was, the, umpire, the umpires like me for some reason. <laughs> you did not get ejected for standing in the middle, of, and he never even touched on plate. Hey, I'm lucky he didn't punch me because I, when I was yelling at him, I was seeing stars as I was yelling. So if he if he clips me with the right, yeah, I could big fella could have gone down with your mask <laughs> up too. Your face was right yeah, that there. Was, that was a mistake. Well, that was a great photo, man. It got everybody yeah. fired up. But I love I love Carlos. He apologized after the game. He said you you said what you told him was just don't. Freddie told him you know act like you've been here before as he's rounding the bases, and then he said what. He said I was wrong, and he, he apologized to the Braves and the way he carried himself. And there's wow. so many dudes like that in the game too that are just great guys, and then you put them on the field, and they go to another dimension. Like to, uh, yeah. uh, flip, yep. uh, switch flips, and it, it's cool to see that you guys, you know, piled up and everything's all good. You know, yeah. this came right after. It's like a week or two later, I think, right after you got into it with Jose Fernandez. And Man. Jose Fernandez apologized after that game and said I was wrong. And he said, "You you handled it well. You just told him." Well, to no, that no, nah, that see that like that's where the people don't know that whole story. But like, I get Gaddis hit a homer off him, right, and stared at him, and then he came up and looked down at the plate to hit, and he looked at me. And he goes, "I don't appreciate." the way he's looking at me and I don't appreciate that at all. I said, dude, I got it. I understand. Blah, blah, blah. And uh -huh. then he went deep and yeah, did that. So thing. when he hit home plate, I'm like, you can't you. get mad at him. Right. And then do something 10 times worse. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm the, I'm the fun police, man. <laughs> I hate it. Dude, I hated so much that you got that label because I know I, we all said that. It's, I it's knew so those far stories. From the truth. Yeah. I knew those stories. And th that's why I'm glad that, you know, like, I saw some videos of you doing some funny stuff your last couple years of your career and kind of showing people that side of you. Cause this is one of the most fun teammates I've ever had. And he did a really good job of toning it down and doing things the right way. But when he had this label fun police, it pissed me off every time uh, I heard it. And Freddie you know got funny? that label too. And Freddie wasn't like that either. What's no. funny is I got that more than anything. When I went with my teammates, they were like, dude, I didn't know you. I thought I didn't think you liked that. You I didn't think you, I'm like, dude, I'm where where are we going? I'm good. I'm in. <laughs> I'm one of, I'm one of you. Yeah. I'm one of you guys. Hey, speaking of, just as I, I I Jose Fernandez, I try to tell people who didn't see that guy pitch how mm. great he was. I really think if he because he'd already had Tommy John and he was great when he came right back. I think he would have been now, obviously, first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think he would have been one of the all-time greats. If he all stayed time. healthy, if he stayed healthy, I mean, I don't – the talent was I, – I still don't know if we've seen somebody with the talent that he has. 
The, yeah. the way he got his breaking ball to—I mean, he literally could throw it every pitch, and you yeah. literally not hitting it. It's one of yeah. the, that. It was that special. The way he he the way he lit up a field, man. He was uh-huh. he was literally a kid playing a man's game, and he just kept that same mentality. And yeah, he he was he was different. He was different than the rest. I haven't seen a pitcher with that much talent and that much charisma. He had the charisma oh, yeah. of an Acuna or whatever. Yeah. And it just, everybody liked watching him because he was having so much fun out there while being the pitcher on the level of DeGrom and Strider. I mean, that kind yeah. of a guy. Yeah. 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 You never wanted to go into Miami. You were always hoping that, like, you look at the probable starters and you're like, ah. <laughs> Every time. Game like, two is oh, going to be him. rough. We got him. Ho- hopefully you get a bleeder out there. Go one for four. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Um, all right, let's talk real quick about this uh, this Braves team. What what have you thought just about that the uh, the line? Have you ever played on a team with as deep a lineup as this one's got now? If Kellenic hits at all this year, you could say there's not a weakness in this lineup. We don't know right. yet from Kellenic, but if he right. he hits like he was in the first forty five games last year, this lineup would be literally without a weakness. I mean, yeah, they, Ar- Arcee would be the closest to a weakness. They, they they got it all covered. And I think as a catcher, every time you look over in the on-deck circle, it seems like Ronald Acuna is on deck. So as a <laughs> yeah. catcher, this offense puts you in – you either have one or two options. You're either going to go into the game saying, I'm coming right at you and we'll see what happens, or – Nine times out of ten, these guys are going to nickel and dime, and and you're going to look up, and there's going to be a hundred pitches thrown through four and a third, or three and three and a third, because they're going to they're going to wear you down. So you literally have to. You got two options, and neither of them sound great, right? But yeah, I think they're they're just deep, and I think Ronald said, and then, and then Austin Riley, man, I, we don't talk enough about how good he is. Yeah, and Matt Olson. 54 homers and a buck 30 like and he and he gets under the radar but yeah yeah they, they just keep coming at you they they lose Dansby they don't skip a beat with Arcia they uh it's lose just Freddie been, yeah lose Freddie you get Olsen like it's it's really like like I said earlier this is this is prime prime time to turn the tv on and watch baseball for for an Atlanta fan I don't you think Harris really pick your matchups Right. You know, now, like we used to, I, I, I like throwing to Matt because somebody would come up and it'd be like, this is a bad matchup. I'm going to throw him bullshit in the dirt and I'm going to try to get the next guy to hit into a double play. And it's not even like you can't pick your matchups for a bad hit. You can't pick your matchups for a guy that can't take you deep, like yeah. all the way through the lineup. You almost have to call. see, you almost have to see who who's not hot <laughs> at the time. Right. And yeah. really like did not dissect so much that, but like, Hey, who's coming in here hot? Who's coming in here? Not. And, Who's not beating us? But you got to keep the only the only chance you have to to consistently beat the Braves is keeping Ronald Acuna off the bases because yeah. he because the pitchers are going to rush, which gives Olson and it gives Riley and we haven't even talked about Ozzy Albies, who's yeah I know for me he's way he, under the radar. He might be the leader of that team. I mean, yeah. he, you talk about a guy that's I can't say enough good things about him. People ask me all the time, and I'm like, this guy is top of the food chain gets along with everybody his personality's yeah. great and you, everybody gravitates towards Ozzy everybody doesn't matter where you come from doesn't matter how old you are I caught myself all the time just gravitating towards towards him in 2019 I was I always wanted to be around him and hear what he had to say and so yeah I, I it's it's tough to get to this lineup there's so much positivity he's kind of like Prado in that he transcends the ethnicities in the clubhouse and all that Prado exactly. to me was the all-time leader as far as just yes. being able to didn't matter what well, nationality was Oz has got a lot of that in him too and yep. uh and he has it with this effervescent style and energy that he has and uh yeah he's uh they missed him when he was hurt and missed a lot of the season he's uh he's he's a special player and uh when you when you were talking about the catchers Sal Fasano oh yeah is is a big reason these guys are having is big reason I I came back to Atlanta and I had success my last year, but man, you talk about someone who who's dedicated to his craft yeah, and is able to give us information that's valuable and yeah, you know, and, and Kevin Seitzer, 
He, yeah. You know, the, the Braves have it all covered yeah. from yeah. top to bottom, all the Best way up, coach and staff. all the way down. Yeah, they lose Wash, huge loss. Uh, yeah. And you lose EY Senior, big loss too. But I, I've told people, I thought the coaching staff they've had for the past five or six years is the best in the majors. And you named the two guys that really, Salfasano, because he's not, you know, a colorful character like, oh, uh, he is, but he doesn't say a lot to, yeah. publicly. Like Wash did, he's not loud, that kind of thing. But Salfasano, man, that guy's brilliant. And what he's, he's brought to this team as a catching coach, a position that really didn't exist before he got here, how would yep. you like to have that had that guy as your catching coach for I would I would have loved I would have loved it because I I wasn't a great thrower of the baseball like I I was right around league average every year I was like twenty five right. to twenty eight percent and you know I I realized when I got to New York I had a catching a catching guy named Gary Tuck mm -hmm. who changed changed the way I threw. He changed the way I threw. He changed the way I received. Not not so much received, but he changed the way my exchange. My mm -hmm. exchange got better, and then I ended up stolen out forty five to close to fifty percent of the runners. And I felt like if you if you stole, and the pitcher gave me enough time, you were out. And I never I never felt like that before. So I would have loved to have Sal uh, early in my career. They spend so much time on that, on on receiving technique. One knee, yep. all that. I mean, they, God, he spends a lot. And everybody he gets gets better throwing out guys. They do. They do. And, and sights are too. Yeah. He, 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 when I, when I left uh, Atlanta too, he, he was, he wasn't so much, he didn't have to, the X's and O's of the swing. Like, yeah, if you had a major flaw, he was going to, you know, correct it and make sure you, but man, did he, did he preach approach and going up to the plate and understanding what you're trying to accomplish so yeah. I, I think too. I think it's not a not a coincidence either that the 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 way that all these guys are having career years and he he's a big reason for that as well. Yeah, I think what what separates him. A lot of hitters tell me is he's not one of these coaches, hitting coaches that has the big ego and tries to mold everybody into the swing he likes. He yep. doesn't change people's swings. He watches them for a few weeks when they get here. And, and if he sees something, a flaw, he points it out to him. But he doesn't try to change guys like he had the one yeah. famous city coach had everybody swinging down. You've had other guys. He doesn't try to cookie-cutter formula. He lets guys hit to their strengths. He didn't change Freddie Freeman's swing. And, you know, and he's humble enough to go, why would I change that? The guy, Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, that, that I think sometimes overcoaching is worse than – sometimes undercoaching oh is better God. than – if you know a guy knows what he's doing and he's grinding and he's, yeah. and he's working towards something – to throw something on their plate can backfire. Yeah. Last thing you want to be doing is thinking about where you are in space as you try to execute in the major league game. Like yeah. if you're consciously thinking about adjustments and it's so easy to just hammer a guy or, or, or be in their space too much where they're, where they're thinking about you when they're in the box and trying to do this thing you want them to do right and, and forgetting to compete. And there's, he's right on that. Like so many coaches just do too much and then you get in the guy's head versus what sites does man i mean pretty much everybody seems to get better when they get over to atlanta there's yeah. a reason for it hey mac a couple other things here i want to ask you who's the if, if you can if you can narrow this down who's the best hitter or all-around player that you ever played with uh your choice whether it be a hitter or all-around player or if you, i if mean you, or is there a couple of them because you played in some I'm great all, organizations um, i think chipper jones yeah. is yeah. is one of one i think he's it's funny if you ever go back and look at his. I, I love diving into the draft. I love watching high school players. I love watching their videos and who I would take and who I wouldn't yeah. take and all this stuff. But if you pulled up Chipper's, yeah, high school film, he's yeah. going one one in any draft, right? Ever. I mean, he just moved. He was built for baseball and his knowledge of the game and so what he did for like the things he did for me and the player he was. He was my idol growing up. And then to play with him and for him to show me how to hit. I mean, he really yeah. did. I, I always knew how to hit, but I didn't know that there were levels. I mean, Chipper would go up to the plate and he would tell me, I'm going to swing out of my shoes no matter where this pitch is. I don't care if it's over my head, I'm swinging. And he would swing at it. So then the catcher's like, oh, he's super aggressive tonight. And then he <laughs> would sit change up the rest of the night. And usually two guys were on, and usually he, we'd be down one run, and he'd give us the lead. Wow. He was a, yeah, he yeah. was a step ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, I tell people that dude because I I agree. He of thirty years of covering baseball, he's the best player I've ever covered. All around player, best no hitter. Doubt. I say Acuna's got the talent to move into that if he does it another five years. But yep. Chipper, he's a hitting savant, man. At the end of his career, yeah. when he was broken down, had all the knee surgeries, he was broken down. He'd come off the mm -hmm. IL, and he could backspin a ball, have a swing that didn't even look that great, and hit it out. Hit it four hundred feet the other way. I mean, he's just he was just like you said, built for baseball. But Acuna's Acuna's he's he's so electric off the charts talent. I mean, it's off the charts. Most I talent mean, I've ever seen in any player. Most talent, yeah, hands down, it, hands down. I I, I I agree with you a hundred percent. What he what he brings with his legs, his arm, his does defense. Everything. He Some does of the everything. Balls he hits out to opposite field that just look like pop ups. Yeah, and then and then they're ten fifteen rows deep. Yeah, like this, yeah. No, but yeah. he does he, that. He's Otani, must see TV. Yeah. yeah, he is. He is. He is fun to cover because he's never – the game's never boring when he's going to be playing. It's never boring. He'll do something. And yeah. the way he comes up to lead off a game, I've never seen anybody even close to that. I mean, you better be in your seat when this guy's leading off the game. Yeah. it's like – yeah, he's fun to watch. <laughs> and and, yeah. and you see him, and you're expecting him to be like Mike Trout or Shohei, and he's about six feet, six one, and about 205 pounds. I mean, he's a normal-looking guy. Yeah, he is. He's just blessed with super fast twitch muscles and hips that just explode. And yeah. he's just, he does everything. You know what's funny is he wears those, the way he wears his pants. I guess they call them, I, I didn't know this, but they call them dirty mids. You know, uh -huh. it's all about the pants he wears yeah, yeah. halfway down his shin. Yep. Every, I mean, every kid's every doing kid it now. Them. Every kid wants <laughs> to take their, their pants to get tailored. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, He's 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 such a talent and and he's changed the game. Yeah, he has. Did you see he that has. video of him throwing the ball in in Arizona? It, it was on Twitter, but Paul Bird put it. it out there. I think he's throwing the ball from the the first baseline in Arizona, playing catch, and he just flicks it, and it looks like about 30, 40 percent effort, and he throws it twenty rows deep in the left field seat. Yeah, I saw that. How, how hard is that? He's different. There's nothing he can't do, and yeah, what separates nothing. him from everybody else is his legs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, that that's that's the separator that not everybody has. Yeah. Yeah, that's why when he gets hurt, everybody in baseball that's a baseball fan, basically, maybe unless you follow the Phillies, but you're going, you're praying it's not serious because everybody wants to watch this guy. Hey, yeah. I, you're, I, watching, every, you're watching young Mickey Mantle. You're watching that level of you guy. Are. Yep. In 2019, every time he stole, I was almost like, don't do it. Don't yeah. go. Yeah, we can't. Don't see him. Like, I don't want you jamming a finger. I yeah. don't want you twisting yep. an ankle. I, I, I'm literally every time he stole, I was like, yeah. All right, yeah. he's good. He's good. He's good. And slide head yeah. first. I was amazed that he got through still seventy three bags, and slides head first every time. Even with the other men, I was amazed he never did a finger elbow that somebody didn't yeah. drop a knee on him. You know, I mean, it's like he was motivated, man. He 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 was, was he was he was ready. To, he came out with a vengeance this year till the year. end. They're down to the wire. Yeah. We were talking last week about him playing winter ball. Um, I mean, we're both cool with it, but I was wondering what you think about it. I was like, there's a lot worse stuff you could be doing. You yeah. Know, with four months off, but it, it's, it's a tricky one. Cause it's like, you'd hate for him to get hurt down there, but you want him to get to be him and do his thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I almost feel like the, not even getting hurt, but like just let your body rest. Right. Yeah. You know, like like just for the right. longevity of a career, I think. But listen, I, I said it when you're in your prime, you can pretty yep. much yep. you Whatever can pretty you much get moving. And and I and I think the Braves understand too that even if the best thing for him to be would probably be not to play there at all, he's so special and he's so important to your franchise and he's on such a team friendly deal. When he asks you if he can play, yeah. Yep. In his homeland, because it's the Absolutely. only chance that a lot of his friends and family get to see him play down there. Yeah. When he what? asks you and pleads with you, you don't say, you don't tell him no. You you let him go. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think he'll go. do it forever. But I, me and Eric and I were talking about this. Guys used to do it all the time. Play in yeah. Puerto yeah. Rico on these rock hard artificial turfs. Yeah. Our, uh, great, great players would go home and play in their homeland in winter ball. It used to yeah. be kind of normal. No. Yeah. Um, best pitcher or pitchers that you ever caught? That's kind of hard coming from this franchise. You don't want to say uh, I got, guy. I got two. I got Smolty and Verlander. Yeah, and those two are are they're cut from the same cloth. And, you yeah. know, they're just phenomenal pitchers that are 
they're not just pitching. They're, they're thinking about, all right, how can I get 20 years in and be dominant for those 20 years? So like they, those guys just don't shut off. Yeah. They don't shut off. They're, they're always, they're always thinking, they're always working. And those two guys were the most, most dominant. Considering you caught Charlie in 2017 with Houston, did you see something in him then that would make you not surprised that he's still doing this at age 40 and still pretty damn good? I'm not surprised at all. You talk about somebody like if you look at his body and look yeah. the way he moves. Yeah. He's limber. He yeah. his arm he has nothing holding his arm back. I think he had more more problems when he was younger trying to figure out his body, but the minute he figured out what makes him tick, yeah. And I think that's why he's he's gotten better as he's gotten older because he's he understands who he is and he, he understands how to prepare. So I got I got to get 32 starts in and I know exactly what I need to do. And I think it, early on it he didn't know himself as well as 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 it got going. Yeah. So I think that's why you're seeing him become great later in, in his career. Um Chris Sale, you faced him. How yep. tough lefty I facing hate... <laughs> facing Chris Sale. How tough was that? I think when we look back on on the trade and we look yeah. back on the extension they gave him yeah. I think it's a it's a home run. Agreed. Home run. I mean, you you put him with Strider, Freed, Morton, Sale, L. I mean, all of them. I mean, he it it he he pitches to a one. He pitches yeah. to a one when he's healthy, and he's down there throwing ninety. I I saw just a clip, but I I saw him throwing ninety seven from from three quarters, and I hated it. Yeah, that I slider is a lefty. What's that slider yeah, like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you got no shot. <laughs> you got no shot. And with his competitiveness and all that, I think what he adds to this team, mm -hmm. the kind of the counter. And if you this the starting pitchers, every one of them, if and Ronaldo Lopez right now is in that five spot. Yeah. He was throwing hey. 102 last year, 100 as a reliever. He every is guy's very, entirely different. Every guy's entirely different. He's a very uncomfortable at bat. Lopez, very, very uncomfortable. I love that sign as well. But yeah, they, they, they uh, the sale sign though, like what you said in the clubhouse, the experience, the grit, you know, the he'll hold guys accountable, make sure yeah. people are doing their work. And yeah, I think it was a home run. Oh, I think it was a home run. Explain that. Like, because it would always shock me. I would see these guys with this amazing stuff and I'd ask you guys about them and you'd say it was comfy versus you just described this guy as a very uncomfortable bat but just like explain what that means when you're hitting i mean guys get you gotta there's two different things you gotta have stuff and you gotta be able to locate and i think location will ne i know everybody's throwing a hundred everybody's throwing hard but location will never will always be king the best mm -hmm. players will have the velo and they can locate the guys that that have trouble either their angles to the plate are off the the hitter sees it a lot a lot easier than than others, um, you know. I, we were always big in Atlanta where you stood on the rubber. I, yeah. You have to hold the side of the plate. I would always get I would always get frustrated when I would catch and I would move to the away to a righty, and a right handed pitcher's on the third base side of the, to the of the rubber, and if I'm on the corner, and it's cutting across the plate, and I catch it and it's two inches off the plate. It never held the plate, so he has to bring that in, and then you have to be so fine with it that you're you you're gonna miss middle middle, and you're gonna get yeah. beat. So that we was would the first always. Thing you told me. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you got. I think depending on what you have, if you're a right-handed pitcher and you're a sinker baller, you need to be on the first base side of the rubber. If you're a cutter guy, I just think you got to be able to hold one side of the plate and then pitch to the other when when you have to. Yeah, that was a huge difference for me when, when I came to Atlanta talking to Mac because I had this at bat against Matt Stairs, and it was like a 10-pitch at bat. And this, if this ball gets out, it might change my confidence in the trajectory of my entire career. Luckily, the wind was blowing in. But Matt comes and talks to me the next day, and he's like, hey, move to the middle of the rubber because you were throwing bastard sliders yesterday, but you can't throw it for a strike without catching a lot of plate, and that runs right into his bat path. And just something mm -hmm. like that coming from your catcher, I was like, man, I hadn't heard anything like that in my life. I've been on the first base side my entire career. I moved to the middle, and all of a sudden, lefties just start flailing at the exact same slider, but just changing that angle up. So and I, then that your sinker, 
your sinker also starts middle middle so it looks and like runs. a strike and with your action yep. on it it's going to end up on the corner even a ball off so you're going to get weak contact yeah so i think angles are huge and you know everybody everybody sees the world different and i think the the great players are able to put that puzzle together it's it's a yep. never ending puzzle that you got to put together um and some guys stop looking for the pieces and some guys are like i'm going to go i'm 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 going to find that piece yeah. Along and those, those lines, are the guys that played for a long time. Along those lines, two of the biggest developments in Braves camp this year have been Spencer Strider's curveball, which is legit. Yeah. I mean, he's throwing that as a third pitch now. Yeah. He's he was the he's led the majors in strikeouts and a strikeout over 13 per nine innings, basically as a two pitch pitcher. Yeah. How much how much better can that make him if that's a legit pitch that he's willing to throw 10, 15 times a I, game? I think it's going to open up a lot more doors for him. I don't I don't think he has to be so fine if if something's off one night, maybe he can flip a little, couple more curveballs in there or start a couple guys off with mm -hmm. breaking balls so they don't see his fastball and get timed up. And so yeah, if he can land it early, yeah, and then if, if he can land it early and then get back into counts, and then if he can put him put him away. If he can do those three things with that, with his breaking ball or with his fastball. Man, we haven't seen anybody like him either. <laughs> no, he's he's. No. It, I've never I, seen anybody like him. No, I can't. I can't. I did the game. They had me come down to the, do the game when against Colorado, and he punched out sixteen. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, he's he's <laughs> he's playing a different game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other is Smith Shaver, who a guy we've talked about. Eric and I've talked about. This is a guy who didn't start pitching until after his junior year in high school. He's been pitching for four years. Mm -hmm. And he learned a change up in the offseason that again is legit. This guy can throw easy gas 97, 98, 99. Former high school quarterback can throw it 75 yards of football. Yeah. Um, have you have you had a chance to see this guy pitch? And how I, his future looks pretty damn bright. I've seen him pitch once, but I, you know, I I not I haven't dove too deep in on him. But yeah. I know he's a guy that they're hoping can come up and and be that next wave and and yeah. get the ball and and kind of fall in line with with those guys. Yeah. You'd love to and see Wal it. And Waltrip, the guy was in Florida. You talked about college the guys that could be ready. Waltrip was pitching for Florida last summer. He he should be up. But he should be up by midsummer. He might be up sooner than that. He's looked great in spring training. He's in minor league camp now, but that kid's legit. With that split, you don't see that split much anymore. Yeah. Was so he the guy that was too. pitching? Was he the one pitching in, in the College World Series? Yeah, with that with that split, throwing mm -hmm. striking out everybody with that split, oh. just dropping off the table. Oh yeah, or UF for Florida. I remember. I remember him watching that game. Yeah, he's a stud, man. Was Person he going head up against Skeens? Was that? Was that? Was he? I forget now. I, I don't know. I can't remember, but I, I remember watching. I, and I remember. I was like, wow. I was watching with my son. I'm like, yeah, you ain't you ain't hitting that. <laughs> well. Mac, it sounds like with all this knowledge you got that it's only a matter of time when your kids get a little older that you're going to be wanting to get back in. Could you see yourself doing something like Sal Fasano's doing? Or could you see yourself managing? No, I, I can – whenever whenever my whenever my house gets a little older, whenever yeah. my kids get moving, I would love to, to get back in and, and do something for sure. Um, yeah. You know, we'll see We'll see what when that time comes. But for, for right now, I'm going to pour into my kids and – Coach youth, youth baseball, which is which is nuts, by the way. But I'm I'm having I love it. I love Rossi, it. Rossi Rossi likes it, doesn't he? He likes he managing, loves it. doesn't he? Yeah, he loves yeah. it. I was shocked at that move, but then again, you get a chance to get counsel. I could understand it, but I thought I'm Rossi did a good Ross. job with what he, with Rossi with what Ross. he had. Yeah, <laughs> with what he had, I thought he did a great job. He's the, he's it. he's incredible, man. I, I an organization would be lucky to have D Ross yeah. running the show. Yeah, he he's a he's a winner. He's a winner. Yep. You know, he's he wins everywhere he goes. The Cubs were supposed to win. I don't even know how many games they were supposed to win. But it, yeah. they won 10 more games than what they were projected to win. Yeah. So it wasn't like they were running out there a heavyweight squad. And for him to do they, – they almost made the postseason. Yeah. I'm surprised somebody didn't hire him right away. So. No, he, he'll, he'll be back in whenever he wants. All right. Well, you've been more than uh... – gracious giving us an hour and 10 minutes or so and uh we really appreciate it. it's been great man we appreciate you having on uh, nah, talking about everything 
You guys are the absolute awesome. best, man. I, I enjoyed it all. O'Flaherty is one of my favorite people on planet Earth. <laughs> DOB, I've always appreciated everything you did for me, man. All right, Mac. I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as we did, and uh, we'll do it again at some point. Appreciate it.